Okay, so before I start, I just want to preface this that I won't be writing any code this video. I'll just be reviewing some code. Also, I'll say this as well. If you did not watch the last video, it's important that you do this because if you don't, you won't understand anything. So go ahead, pause it, pause this right here and go back to the last video, watch it, and then come right back. Okay, so first things first. Also, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and leave a comment if you have any questions. Subscribe, do all that stuff. So let's go into it. So in the last video I have actually written this all this out obviously that you know and the most important thing I want to focus focus on are the data loader and the data set class so we know that I can actually retrieve these two values which is the input and the target now this is all great if my data sets real simple and I all I only need to get an input and a target these one these two values that's all I need so the problem is where my data set becomes very complex or more complex where I have multiple things that I need. Now, when I go into this code and I look at this torch.data.dataset class, I know that what it's using to retrieve the values that I need. So we can actually go here and it's using this example class. And I know this because I looked through the code and you can look through it yourself. Uh, it's, it's right here go there into the github repo and you'll find it right so i go into this class and i see okay well this data sets using this strut example and the strut example is just basically returning two tensors and 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 that's fine and all but what if i have multiple values well i can actually well if i have multiple values i can actually see if the tensor are the same sizes then i could stack the tensors and i have no problem but what if the tensors are different sizes? What if my input has various tensors of different sizes? What if my target has various tensors of different of sizes? Then that becomes a problem where I can't use this class anymore. So what did I do? I had to get rid of this class, restructure it, and basically rewrite everything that's in it. So now that I've rewritten everything that's in it, I can't use the the make data loader function anymore. I mean, class that PyTorch has anymore. So I had to go ahead and write my own. And when I was writing my own, I obviously went to the, you know, the documentation and I read all the params. I figured out which params were, you know, of importance to me that I needed. And I added those in. So I'll show you that right now. One second. right here you know you can see that I've rewritten base this is another project by the way but I've rewritten pretty much everything that's was in here that was important and then I ran and you know wrote my own data loader so it took in, I have those params right here you can see it right here as well in the constructor uh, then I made my own operator this operator is responsible for iterating through the data set that's all it does, it iterates through the data set and it allows me to get multiple values back. You can actually look at my get function where it's, it requires an index and all of the inputs or targets that I need to be passed back. So that's what I did there. I wrote my own data loader and I wrote my own um, data set function to, for me to work with this I guess this data set. Uh, we can go through the main loop where you know I have I set all my parameters and all that stuff, my transformations, my pre-processing, all that stuff, right? So right here you can see where I initialized the data set and also where I passed it through the data loader. And you can see right here. This is how I iterate through it. So I pass in this mini batch, which is basically a tuple of all the things that I need from it. And then from there, I can grab each value that I need. Uh, let's go into the constructor. I initialize the values. Uh, I'm indexing the values that I need. I'm shuffling. I'm getting, then I'm gathering the those values at that indexes. Um, 
basically putting everything together right here and then I send those things back and then I clear everything that I don't need uh, you can go through the code yourself it's it's not that hard if you see any you know holes or things you want to improve on then you can go ahead and make a pull request I just wanted to show you guys you know sometimes you might have to do things on your own and it may not be it took me some time to do this but you know it may not be the preferred thing but sometimes it's necessary also doing this you know it allowed me to actually know what's actually happening on the back end so if you guys have any improvements whether it's I made some mistakes or whether you can actually make this run faster that would be great uh, but that's all I just want to show you guys you know if you if you have a custom custom data set and it's very complex then you know sometimes it might be your best best to make your own data set and data loader function class and iterate through it like that if you have another way of doing this like I said just I would like to know leave a comment uh, if you have any questions or you know inputs like the video and subscribe see you on the next one